Today, we have some absolutely game-changing news in the world of investing in finance. That is Fidelity, as of this morning, has announced that they're changing their trading fees to $0 commission trades. I'll talk about briefly what that means for the industry, how that affects Fidelity, and really the points that everybody's really interested in now that the final shoe is dropped and everybody's in on the commission-free trading in the online brokerage market. What happens to Robinhood? What happens to M1 Finance? What happens to all the little guys that made their names off of commission-free trading now that the tables are completely level? What do we do with those guys? What am I gonna do? And then I'm certainly interested to hear what you guys are considering kind of as this all unfolds right in front of our very eyes. This happened this morning. First of all, my name is Rick Dom and welcome to my finance channel. Thank you guys for watching this video. I think that you'll find it relevant and important for your own investing decisions to kind of know the key facts behind this change and deciphering and analyzing what it means for you and I. So if you like this and you like the content here, like the video, comment down below, I answer all the questions, and please subscribe if you see that it brings value into your life. Let's get right into it, guys. This was huge news this morning. I was freaking out when I found this. Um, that sounded a little nerdy. I cut that from the video. But when Fidelity dropped their trading fees this morning in a tweet that kind of left it really casual, left it pretty low key, uh, they evened out the playing field with Charles Schwab, which last week just dropped theirs to zero, TD Ameritrade, and E-Trade, which were kind of like the big uh, giants in the online brokerage industry. And as soon as that first Charles Schwab domino fell, you kind of were looking around thinking like, everybody else has to go commission-free trading, right? Because that's such a big competitive advantage, nobody has a reason to pay for trading when it's out there for free. and it all started when, back in 2014, Robinhood came out with this unheard of in the investing industry idea that uh, you could buy and sell stocks, ETFs, and options from your phone and not have to pay them anything. And in the next five years, from 2014 to 2019, they signed up six million people to do that, including me. I'm a big Robinhood fan. I know M1 Finance has come out of that Webull is another app that has come out of that and it's all the young generation that's kind of very tech savvy they're good and comfortable with using their phones for important stuff like investing and finally after all of these apps like Robinhood, M1 Finance, etc. came out with these uh, the big boys Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, Fidelity are all looking around and saying we have to find some way to attract these new investors what is it, what is it, what is it and finally everybody all within a week decided to go commission free. So Fidelity is a big deal though, one because I use it, not, not that it's a big deal for you guys because I use it, but it is the biggest online broker. They manage $2.8 trillion in assets. They run retirement, they run other benefit plans for companies, they give you advice too, like professional financial advice. Uh, they sell products and services, they do loans, um, they work with huge investors, they work with really tiny, tiny fish like me. So as for the company, they're not publicly traded, so we can't exactly see where they make all their money, but they'll be fine. They don't have investors looking at them saying, hey, we need these fees from trading, uh, which is why they're able to cut this and be okay in the short term and the long term probably as well. Charles Schwab and TD Ameritrade, their stock price tanked after announcing that they were doing this because while it's good for them and they needed to do it to stay competitive with the small investment apps, uh, they're losing a ton of revenue. And investors who are looking to make money from the companies, um, they want that revenue too. But in the bottom line, it's great for us as people using these companies to buy and sell our stocks, options, and ETFs. So let's get right into kind of what Fidelity is thinking and what that means for these smaller companies and who we should even use from this point on out. So Fidelity's whole pitch and why they kept this so low key this morning with just kind of a tweet and like a small press release that they were dropping their fees on trading is they think that top to bottom, they're the best. 
And it's hard to argue, Fidelity has incredible customer service. Uh, they have money market accounts, which is where they'll hold your cash until you decide to invest it. And their money market accounts pay a really, really high interest rate. I'm invested in SPACs, S-P-A-X-X-X, uh, sorry, S-P-A-X-X, two X's, just two, just two. And that pays me about 1.97% interest on my money that's just sitting there, which is really, really good. It's much better than you would get at a bank or a credit union, uh, typically. So uh, they've got the customer service, they've got great rates for your money just sitting there. Um, they have tons of options. You could do your retirement with them. Uh, you can buy tons of different investment products. And really, it's just like a professional, powerful research engine that if you want to invest simply, you can get very simple signs as to whether you should buy something or not. And if you want to really look into it, they have more data than you could ever read through. Uh, so it's got everything there, whereas the small apps really kind of, mostly it's simple. It's just simple charts, a few news articles. It's really, really basic stuff there for you. So what does this mean now when you start to compare and look around to see where you want to keep your hard-earned money? I asked myself this question, and at first I was like, well, I'm in Robinhood now, so I might as well just keep my money there. It's I won't have to pay to move it. If I sell it, I'm going to be taxed at a higher rate, especially for uh, the stocks that I recently bought. When you buy and sell stocks in a short period of time, uh, you're taxed at a higher rate than if you're a long-term investor. And that would be a negative for me to move all of my holdings over. Either I pay for the transfer fee or I pay in taxes later down the road um, in February. And then I start to think about it a little bit more though. And long-term, who do I really want my money with? I'm okay in Robinhood now, it's fun to swipe and buy and sell stocks from my phone, but uh, when I'm 30 years old or 10 years from now when I'm 35 years old and my investing becomes more serious and I'm dealing with hopefully larger sums of money, I think you're gonna wanna consider that you're probably gonna want the most reliable, um, power-packed investment brokerage on your side. Now, I'm not saying Robinhood or M1 Finance or any of these other little guys can't get there, but they're now in a big time crunch to make some moves to level the playing field because if all you were investing for with Robinhood and these apps was for the $0 commission trading, well, you can just get the company that gives you everything and does it incredibly well, probably one of the best in the market, and they also let you trade for free. So I don't know what I'm gonna do right now. I might wait and play this out. Robinhood just introduced a cash management card and uh, they've gotta have a response to this because they'll start to see it in the numbers and the people investing with them before and after the changes of this week. So I'm gonna put this one on the back burner. I'll probably make another video explaining my thoughts in comparing the two and what it really boils down to. But I wanna hear what you guys think. This is a crazy, crazy day in the market. So let me know. Thank you for sticking through the video. If you made it this far and wanna leave a comment or like the video and maybe subscribe to the channel if you find this information and stuff like this valuable, make videos like this all the time talking about relevant keys for people about my age to invest. So. Thank you guys, it's an exciting day. Have a great night.